Okay, so this would be the Module 6 lecture. Uh, this will be the last lecture for this quarter. So hopefully this will help you out uh, for studying for the final and for working on the homework. Uh, this will be what we talk about in class on our last lecture day, which would be on the 21st. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing we want to talk about is the binomial coefficient. Basically, uh, the binomial coefficient uh, can be expressed uh, for non-negative integers, uh, and it's written as this. It looks like n over r. Okay, it's defined as n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. Okay, this looks really complicated, but it's not. Okay, so know that in this case, n has to be bigger than r. Okay, so the top number is always going to be bigger than the bottom number. So n has to be uh, greater than or equal to r. So say we have something like 5 over 4. Okay, so that's going to be 5 factorial over 4 factorial times 5 minus 4 factorial. So that's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 5 minus 4 is just 1, so times 1. Well, that's going to cancel 4s, 3s, 2s, 1s, and we just have 5 over 1, which is just 5. Okay? What about, say, 11 over 3? Well, this will be 11 factorial over 3 factorial times 11 minus 3 factorial. So that's 11 factorial, 3 factorial, 11 minus 3 is 8 factorial. Now, remember, 11 factorial is just 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 factorial, right? Because that's just 8 down. Well, this is 3 times 2 times 1 and then times 8 factorial, right? Well, the 8 factorial, there's no reason to write that all out. So whatever the biggest number down here is, just go to that number and cancel out on the top. And then we can say 3 will go into 9 3 times, 2 will go into 10 5 times. So we've got 11 times 5, which is 55, times 3, which is what, 165 over, that just gives us 1 on the bottom, so 165. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, there are a few things that you should know, special cases. Let me give you an example. Say 4 over 0. This is going to give us 4 factorial over 0 factorial times 4 minus 0 factorial. Well, that's just 4 factorial. 0 factorial, remember, that's just 1. And then 4 factorial. Well, those are just going to cancel out. Anything divided by itself is 1. So, we see that 4 over 0 is 1. doesn't matter what this number is. This will be 5 factorial. That will be 5 minus 0 will be 5 factorial. It will just cancel out. So, anything... over 0 is just equal to whatever that anything is. So 275 over 0 like that, or above. The way they actually define it, you say above, not over, because over would denote uh, division. So you say 275 above 0. So that's still going to be, that's just 275. It's always just whatever that top number is. Okay. Now, that's a special case. 
Up here we saw 5 over 4. What if we had 75 over 74? Well, that would be 75 factorial over 74 factorial times 75 minus 74 factorial, which is just 75 factorial over 74 factorial times 1. Well, this is 75 times 74 factorial, right? Over 74 factorial. The 74s just cancel out and you get 75. So just like with a number over 0, a number over 1 less than itself will also give you... So anything above... Uh, anything minus 1 equals anything. So 275 above 274 would be what? 275. It's just that top number. Oops. Alright. The other one would be say 83 over 1, or 83 above 1. That's going to be 83 factorial, 1 factorial, 83 minus 1 factorial. Well, that's 83 factorial, 1, 82 factorial, right? Well, 83 factorial is just 83 times 82 factorial. 82 factorials will cancel out and just leaves you with 83. So just like with one less, just one will also give you that number. So anything over or anything above one gives you that anything. So 2,743 above one. What is that? 2,743. Okay. Now, up here, I made a mistake. And I hope y'all caught it. 4 above 0 gave us 1. Anything above 0 doesn't give us anything. It gives us one, right? Anytime it's over above zero, it gives us one. So that shouldn't be 275. What should that be? That should be one. Anything above zero gives you one. So 275 above zero gives us one. Only time you get the actual number on the top is if it's one less or if it's just one. All right. So that's how you do the binomial coefficient. Now let's talk about the fundamental counting principle. Now the fundamental counting principle just tells us that it's uh, basically the number of ways in which a series of successive things uh, can occur if is the, okay, hold on. Let me say it right. If you want to find the number of ways in which a, a series of things can occur, it's found by multiplying the number of ways that each thing can happen. Okay? So, uh, this is called the fundamental counting principle. So, the number of ways... in which a series of successive things can occur is found 
by multiplying the number of ways in which each thing can occur. That's the most awful occur ever. Okay. For example, say we've got a pizza place. And you can order pizza. You know, we like to talk about pizza in this class. So you can order pizza, and you can order it in either small, medium, or large. And you can get four different types of crust. You can either get thin crust, you can get like a pan, like a deep dish, you can get hand tossed, or you can get uh, like crispy, like almost a cracker type, like super thin. All right. And you can get six different types of toppings. So you can get uh, ground beef. You can get uh, pepperoni. You can get sausage. You can get mushrooms. You can get onions. And then you can get bacon. All right, so if these are all the ways that you can order pizza, how many different one-topping pizzas are available? How many different ways can you order a one-topping pizza? Okay, so the fundamental counting principle tells us that the number of ways in which a series of successive things can occur is found by multiplying the number of ways in which each thing can occur. Okay, so I've got how many different types of how many sizes do I have? I have three different sizes. How many different crusts do I have? I have four different types of crusts. How many different one toppings do I have? Two, three, so I've got six one toppings. So to find how many different one topping pizzas I have, I just multiply each one of these numbers together. So three times four times six gives me uh, what 72 okay so that tells me how many different one topping pizzas I have now what if I wanted to know how many total pizzas I could get if I didn't want to limit it to just one topping pizzas like maybe I want a three topping pizza maybe I want a five topping pizza okay this is a little bit more conceptual it's a little more difficult I still have three different choices for uh, the size, right? I have four different choices for my crust. Now I have to look at my choices for my toppings individually. So ground beef, how many choices do I have for ground beef? Either yes or no. That's two choices for ground beef. How many choices do I have for pepperoni? Two, either yes or no. What about sausage? Yes or no, I have two choices. Mushrooms, yes or no, I have two choices. Onions, two choices, yes or no. And bacon, two choices, yes or no. So if I multiply all of those together, let's see what we get. So three times four times one, two, three, four, five, six, 768 different pizza combinations if I don't limit it to just one topping. So when you go into a restaurant like, uh, I don't know, the one that comes to mind is Waffle House, and they say you can get, you know, hash browns, there's like one million different combinations, you know, whatever. What they're doing is they're doing this kind of counting principle where they say, uh, okay, you can get them scattered, you can get them covered, you can get them chunked, you can get them topped, you can get them diced, you can get them, you know, whatever. I don't even know what they all are these days. But each one of those is an option. You have a yes or a no. You have a yes or a no. You have a yes or a no. 
So basically, it's just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 for every option. Okay? Same way with their burgers. You can have a, you know, a million different options. Do you want a single? Do you want a double? Do you want a triple? So how many options do you have? If you can get up to three hamburger patties, you have three options, a single, a double, or a triple. So you start by multiplying by three. Maybe you've got multiple different types of buns. How many types of buns do you have? You know, you've got th two different types of buns, so you only got two. So three times two, right off the bat, you've got six different options just choosing whether you want, you know, this type of bun and two patties. You know, if you want to add ketchup, multiply by two, yes or no. Do, do you want mustard? Multiply by two, yes or no. Do you want mayonnaise? Multiply by two, yes or no. Do you want to add bacon? Multiply by two, yes or no. Do you want double bacon? Aha. Uh -huh. There you go. You're uh, multiplying by two again. So, I mean, it's like this is the fundamental counting principle. That's where they get these weird numbers like a zillion different combinations. People always wonder where that comes from. That's what it is. It's the fundamental counting principle. Okay? All right, the third thing we want to talk about are permutation and combinations. So a permutation is uh, an ordered arrangement of items that occurs, first off, uh, when items are selected from the same group, uh, when no item is used more than once, and like it says in the definition, when order matters. Okay, So this is written as NPR. So we're going to choose our items from n total items, uh, and we're going to permute them. Okay. The formula for this, very similar to the binomial distribution or the binomial coefficient, n factorial over n minus r factorial. Okay, so let's look at an example of when we would use this. So let me look for a problem in the book. Okay, so we want to permute here. A club with 10 members, okay, has to choose 10, or has to choose three officers, a president, a vice president, and a secretary treasurer. If each office is to be held by one person, and no person can hold more than one office, in how many ways can we choose? Uh, can this office be chosen? These offices be chosen. So we've got ten members need to fill three uh, offices. So we've got Prez. Vice Pres and Secretary Trash. Okay? Now, this is how you determine whether order matters. Say you've got three people. Say you've got uh, Bob, June, and Sally. And these are the three people we're going to fill this position. If I put Bob, June, Sally, and then I change the order, June, Bob, Sally, Sally, Bob, June, okay, you see how I'm changing the order, does this change anything? Absolutely, in the first example, Bob is the president, in the second one, June is the president, these are different things, right? This is this is not the same as this. And this is not the same as this, right? Even though it has the same three members, order matters. Okay? So since order matters, then we, we have to permute, okay? So ask yourself that question. If order matters, we're going to use this formula. So we've got 10 members. We're choosing three. So remember, in this, n always has to be greater than or equal to r. So 10 is the n. n equals 10. 
r equals 3. So 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial that gives us 10 factorial over 7 factorial which is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial over 7 factorial the 7 factorials cancel out I just get 10 times 9 times 8 9 times 8 is 72 times 10 is 720 so there are 720 different ways to choose three members to fill uh, those three offices from ten members. Okay? Now, this is called permutation. What about if order doesn't matter? If order doesn't matter, then it's called combination. And it's called NCR. And this is just the binomial coefficient. This is n factorial over n minus r factorial r factorial. So here items are still selected from the same group. No item is used more than once, but order doesn't matter. So now say I've got ten member a ten member group and I need to form a committee using three people. A three-member committee. Okay. Say I've got the same people. Bob, June, and Sally. So say I choose Bob, June, and Sally. What if I choose Sally... June and Bob or uh, June Bob Sally alright is this group the same as this three member committee is it the same as this three member committee absolutely there's no difference between those three people, this three people, these three people, and these three people are all the same three people. There's no order to differentiate them. There's no reason to change them, right? So, here, order doesn't matter. Okay? So, we just use the binomial coefficient. So, we still have n equals 10, r equals 3, so 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial, so 10 factorial over 7 factorial, 3 factorial, so now this is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial over 7 factorial times 3 times 2 times 1. 7, 7, 3 will go into that 3, 2 will go into that 5, so we've got 5 times 3 times 8, 5 times 3 times 8 is 120. So if, if we're just choosing a three member committee, it's only 120 different options. So you'll always see that combinations are less than permutations. See, 720, much more than 120. Now, when we talk about permutations, uh, you'll notice that since order matters, we can also think of this in a different way. I want to do this problem a different way. I'm going to use the fundamental counting principle to do a permutation problem. Okay? So, say I've got a 10 member, oh, let me get my black. 10 members and I want to select three members okay now I want to say that I want to pick a president then I want to pick a vice president 
then I want to pick a secretary. Okay? How many choices do I have to choose a president? There are 10 members. I can choose 10 different people, right? That makes sense. There are 10 people. I, can, I have any of those 10 people I could choose to be president. Well, if that's the case, then how many people can I choose to be vice president? Well, I chose one person to be president. That means there's only nine people left to be vice president. Okay. Then how many can I choose to be secretary? At this point, there are only eight people left, right? By the fundamental counting principle, 10 times 9 times 8 tells us that that gives us 720 options for choosing president, vice president, and secretary. So we can use the fundamental counting principle when doing permutations. Now this also works for doing things like how many different uh, how many different phone numbers are there? You know, how many different ways can I use the numbers seven five eight three? You know, to make did you know? There's I don't know. Let's 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 make up one real quick. Say I've got the digits one through seven. Okay. How many different ways can I arrange them? so that I have a seven digit number. But, okay, well, let's not but, let's just say one through seven. I wanna arrange those numbers one through seven. Okay, does order matter? Absolutely, if it didn't matter, then it would just be all the numbers out there, okay? Uh, it's a seven digit number, order matters because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is different from seven six three five four three two one, you know, whatever. So, for say I've got this spot, this spot, this spot, this spot, this spot, this spot, and this spot. So, how many different numbers can this be? It could be seven. How many numbers could this be? It could be six. This could be five. This could be four. This could be three. This could be two. This has only got one option. So I can multiply them together. You see what I did there? This first one can be any of, seven, uh, of the seven numbers. But if I chose a number here, then automatically this has only got six options for it to be. I'm not saying that this has to be the number seven or this has to be the number six. I'm saying this has seven options. This has six options. This has five options. Okay? So what is this? 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equals 5,040. Now what if I say using only the numbers 1 through 7 with no number being repeated, how many different ways can I arrange them if This number has to be 3. Okay? So how many options does this one have? Well, I can use the numbers 1 through 7, but no number can be repeated, and this number 3 is already out there. That means this can only be 6 different digits. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, or 7. Can't be 3. This can only be 5 different numbers because I chose 1 here. This can only be four different numbers. This one is already chosen. There's only one option for it. This one, since this is six, this one's five, this one's four, this one has to be three different. This one is two, and that gets us down to this one, which would be only one. So now we get... 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, only 720 options. If I lock one in place, I lose a whole bunch of numbers. OK? 
Okay? So what if I say that the numbers could be 1 through, or let's say 0 through 9, so any digit, So you're looking at a seven-digit phone number. So you were watching somebody dial. You noticed that the first number they dialed was a two. The fourth number they dialed was a four. And the last one they dialed was a zero. So how many different possible telephone numbers would you have to try to guess upon that telephone number? Well, this one is automatically one. How many could this be? Now remember, in this case, they could be repeated. Right? A telephone number can have more than one digit in it. So this could be what? It could be any of those digits, any of the 10. This could be any of those digits, so any of the 10. This is already locked, so it's only one. This could be any of the 10. This could be any of the 10. This could be just one. So we've got 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So that's one with four zeros. So there's 10,000 different options for telephone numbers, assuming that you knew three of the digits. Okay? Last thing I want to talk about real quick is... Uh, Probability. So you'll see probability written a lot of times like this. This means the probability of an event. We define the probability of an event as the number of successes. I don't think I spelled that right, but that's okay. Number of successes over number of total outcomes. So let's assume that I went to the store and I'm looking for a particular bag of jalapeno pretzel snacks. And I go 12 times to the store and of those 12 times, only 3 times did they have those jalapeno pretzel snacks. So how many of how many successes were there? There were three successes. How many times did I go? I went 12 times. So what was the probability of me finding my delicious jalapeno pretzels? One out of four, or 0.25, which is 25%. Okay. Really, that's that's the pure and simple. Uh, definition of probability. Let me give you an example of uh, probability in action. Say you've got a die. Okay. Two dice, one die. Okay, so you've only got one. There's a probability associated with rolling, you know, die. Uh, whole game built around it craps. But we're going to look at the, t the possible outcomes uh, of rolling a die. You could get a 1, you could get a 2, you could get a 3, you could get a 4, you could get a 5, or you could get a 6. Okay? That's the probabilities associated with getting, with rolling one die. What's the, or not the probabilities, that's the outcomes, I'm sorry, the outcomes of rolling one die. What are the outcomes of rolling two die together? Well, you can get anywhere from two. You can't get a one, but you can get two. That would be snake eyes. All the way up to 12, right? Double sixes. So you get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, or twelve. Okay. These are the to these are the outcomes associated with those two things. Now. The thing about this one, you will have, these are exact. You have one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. These are not exact. 
there's more than one way to get uh, each one of these things. Okay, like you can get an eight with double fours, you can get it with a five and a two, you can get it with a two and a five because you've got two die, right? So you have to remember there's different ways of writing things. Okay, these are just sets. Of, uh, of numbers that denote outcomes. Now, uh, the more for us, uh, this is just possible totals. What we want to look at are uh, totals. We want to look at actual die. Uh, die values. So you got one, two, three, four, five. Let's make sure these are commas. All right. This is with one die. With two, how about this? One, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, Four, five, four, six, five, one, five, two, five, three, five, four, five, 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 six, six, one, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, six, six. All right. Now, these are not numbers. It's not 11, 12, 13, 14. These are actual values on the die. A 1 and a 1, a 1 and a 2, a 1 and a 3, a 1 and a 4, a 1 and a 5, a 1 and a 6, a 2 and a 1, a 2 and a 2, a 2 and a 3, a 2 and a 4, a 2 and a 5, etc. Okay? Now, what we want to look at is, if we roll one die, what is the probability of rolling a 4? Okay? So, remember, probability is success over outcomes. So how many successes are there that give us a 4? This gives us a 1, this gives us a 2, this gives us a 3, this one gives us a 4. So we can circle that as a success. 5 and a 6. So there's only one success. How many total outcomes are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's 6 outcomes. So the probability is 1 out of 6. Okay? Which is what, 1 divided by 6, 16.7 percent, okay? Now, over here, what is the probability of rolling a 7? All right, so what we want to do is we want to look at all of these values that add up to be 7. So, this adds up to be 2, so we just need to add them together. This adds up to be 3, 4, 5, 6. That adds up to be 7. 5, 6, 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. Right? So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 successes out of how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, 5, 6, 7, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 3, 4, 5, 36. 36, 6 out of 36. 1 sixth, 16.7 percent. Also, 16.7%. Now, what would be the probability of rolling 
say a nine. Well, let's look for nines. There's a nine. There's a nine. There's a nine. And there's a nine. So there's only four out of 36, which is one out of nine. is 11.1%. Okay. So, that's how you do these. You count the total successes and divide it by the total outcomes. All right. If you've got any questions on this lecture, uh, just shoot me an email, mkellum at itt-tech.edu or tweet me at Professor Kellum. And I will get back to you.